Chapter 13 is called Perfidy Unlimited. Did you guys look up the word perfidy? If you did, you learned that it me meant to be untrustworthy or to deceive someone. Hmm. I wonder who is not being trustworthy to Despero now. Together, the three mice traveled down, down, down. The thread around Despero's neck was tight. He felt as if it was choking him. He tugged at it with one paw. Don't touch the thread, barked the second hood. Yeah, echoed the first hood. Don't touch the thread. They moved quickly, and whenever Despero slowed, one of the two hoods poked him in the shoulder and told him to keep moving. They went through holes in the wall and down golden stairs. They went past rooms with doors that were closed and doors that were flung wide. The three mice traveled across marble floors and under heavy velvet drapes. They moved through warm patches of sunlight and dark pools of shade. This, thought Despero, was the world he was leaving behind, the world that he knew and loved. And somewhere in it, the Princess P was laughing and smiling and clapping her hands to music, unaware of Despero's fate. That he would not be able to let the princess know what had become of him seemed suddenly unbearable to the mouse. Would it be possible for me to have a last word with the princess? Despero asked. A word? said the second hood. You want a word with a human? I want to tell her what has happened to me. Jeez, said the first hood. He stopped and stamped a paw on the floor in frustration. Cripes, you can't learn, can you? The voice was f terribly familiar to Despero. Furlough, he said. What, said the first hood irritably. Despero shuddered. His own brother was delivering him to the dungeon. His heart stopped beating and shrunk to a small, cold, disbelieving pebble. But then... Just as quickly, it leapt alive again, beating with hope. Furlough, Despero said, and he took one of his brother's paws in his own. Please, let me go. Please, I'm your brother. Furlough rolled his eyes. He took his paw out of Despero's. No, he said, no way. Please, said Despero. No, said Furlough. Rules are rules. Readers, do you recall the word perfidy? As our story progresses, Perfidy becomes an ever more appropriate word, doesn't it? Perfidy was certainly the word that was in Despero's mind as the mice finally approached the narrow, steep stairs that led to the black hole of the dungeon. They stood, the three mice, two with hoods and one without, and contemplated the abyss before them. And then Furlow stood up on his hind legs and placed his right paw over his heart. For the good of the castle mice! he announced to the darkness. We delivered this day to the dungeon a mouse in need of punishment. He is, according to the laws we have established, wearing the red thread of death. The red thread of death, repeated Despero in a small voice. Wearing the red thread of death was a terrible phrase, but the mouse didn't have long to consider its implications because he was suddenly pushed from behind by the hooded mouse, mice. The push was a strong one, and it sent Despero flying down the stairs into the dungeon. As he tumbled whisker over tail through the darkness, there were only two words on his mind. One was perfidy, and the other word that he clung to was P. Perfidy, P. Perfidy, P. These were the words that pinwheeled through Despero's mind as his body descended into the darkness. That's the end of the chapter. Who was one of the mice that was leading Despero to the dungeon? Yeah, it was his brother, Furlow. That word perfidy meant not trustworthy. Who was not trustworthy in this last chapter? Yeah, Despero's brother. Despero even asked him, would you let me go? And what did his brother say? Nope. Who else is he thinking about? as he goes down into the dungeon. He's still thinking about the Princess P. I wonder if he'll still be brave when he gets to the dungeon. All right, let's keep going.